In this video tutorial we want to use the previously captured calibration data and prepare to export for 3D engines and media servers working in 3D space. For that purpose we open the mapper 3D and load the project using the file menu. To be on the same page and have the same user interface set up, just go to view and switch default workspace. After we have opened the project in mapper 3D, we have a list of all our captured channels here on the left side in the project JAWS doc. Here we can make adjustments related to the individual projection channels. Here on the bottom left we have the mapping editor where we can adjust settings related to our overall screen shape. In the middle we have multiple views of our projects. First of all we have our 3D view where we have a 3D representation of our screen, our projection channels and our virtual cameras that we will use to telling the 3D engines how they should render their 3D content. We have a 2D view where we see an unwrapped version of our projection setup and we have a mapping 3D where we see the resulting warping correction for each individual channel. On the right side we have the pipeline editor where we can add exporters and preview that will be persistently stored in the project. In the toolbar on the top we can show several previews. As a start we can show a grid on the screen to check our calibration result. This looks quite fine. All the lines in all the channels are aligned. They are matching the screen outline and I have no double imaging in the overlapping zones. But if I would do a preview 3D, my projection looks not correct. There's only a small part on the bottom where I have a somehow matching image. The rest is stretched out and no real content is visible. This is because my virtual camera is still in the default location in the origin of my setup here on the bottom and it's only filming content for the lower part of my projection. These virtual cameras are critical to get the correct content rendered and to calculate the corresponding warping for all the channels. So we need to place these cameras and orient them for all the individual channels. We can do so by selecting a channel, going to viewpoint and the first thing is we set up the eye point. That's the position where the viewer will look at the screen and for which position the content should be prospectively correct. In my case I use a height of one and a half meter above ground and this is also okay. It is for a spherical screen, it is usually in the middle of the dome, but it is not necessary to have the eye point in the middle of the screen. It could also be in front. It depends on your setup and where the viewer should be standing. The important thing is that this eye point usually should be the same for all projection channels. So I hit the say it all and now all my cameras are placed at this position. The next thing I need to do, I need to orient all the cameras to their corresponding projection channel. Since if I would do a preview now, I already have a much better result in the middle, but there are still areas at the edges of the screen where I have no content. In order to orient all the cameras to their corresponding projection channel, I can select all the channels, go to Extras and use Guest Host D. This allows me to quickly orient all the cameras to their projection channel. We can leave all the settings at their defaults, hit OK and now all my cameras are looking through the corresponding projection channel. And now if I hit uh, preview 3D, I have a real image everywhere on the screen. 
we can now check our warping for each channel. So select the first channel, go to the warp mapping 3D tab, and we see now for all the channels the resulting warping. This is okay, we could go on with this, do a preview and export, it would be fine. Sometimes if you have a rotated projector, a projector in portrait mode, or a projector upside down, it might be that the generated camera is not fully aligned with the projector, meaning it might be that the camera is rotated. Let's simulate this by this. So in this case I have a very strong warping, you we see this with the white lines in the background. They are crossing over each other and this would mean this warping is not compatible with most of the hardware warp units and also the re resolution might be unnecessarily low on the screen since the resolution is converted multiple times, especially if the virtual camera is rotated by 90 degree according to the projector. But we can quickly adjust this rotation by rotating the camera first to left or right until the lines get short again. And another thing you want, might want to optimize is to make your virtual camera as small as possible while still keeping enough overlap in the blend zones to maximize your effective resolution of the projection setup. To manually adjust the virtual camera, you can select a channel, go to Fustum, and you can adjust the Fustum in multiple ways. The standard is field of view, we adjust the horizontal and the vertical field of view. There's also the zoom setting where you can fix an aspect ratio and shrink and increase Fustum or you can switch to separate angles where you can individually move the left, right, top and bottom all of the virtual camera. When you want to optimize the virtual cameras and make them smaller, you should, you should check if you have enough overlap in the blend zones. The best way to check this is use a preview cutting. This shows an intersection of the virtual camera and the projection channels. So if I use my top left projector, move the right border in, and update the preview, and you see that the blend zone gets more narrow. So I could now optimize and check that I don't have areas that are not filled by virtual cameras. And if I'm happy with my settings, I can add a preview 3D to make a real warped and blended preview on my screen. It's using the pattern generator that we are running. Just add this step to the pipeline editor so its settings are persistently stored in the project. We keep all the default settings and it's a play button and after a while we should have a warped and blended image on the screen. And if we are happy with our preview result, we could now continue and export the warping and blending data in generic formats for several supported image generators and media servers for desktop warping software or for hardware warp units or projectors that are capable of doing warping and blending in the projector. Thanks for watching and bye.